Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, we have some good news for Carnival fans and Costa Cruise Line fans. We also have uh, some very upset passengers as a cruise was overbooked. And then we have passengers who, yeah, they're sitting there waiting for the bus to pick them up to go to the cruise and the company no longer exists. So the first story, let's talk about Costa Luminosa. We've heard that she's heading over to Carnival Cruise Line. They're switching it over from Costa into the Carnival brand. Well, uh, they just did their final sailing. So the Costa Luminosa will no longer be Costa and it's heading into dry dock for a complete refurbishment and a refit to fit the Carnival brand. Now, she's gonna undergo the, the paint job that you see now on the Mardi Gras, the new blue and white and red symbols that they have on board, but they're also gonna be adding a lot of things, like the Punchline Comedy Club. They're doing Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. They are adding all the new entertainment on board. They're gonna put in the Red Frog Rum Bar etc 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 there's a lot of things they have to add to make this a carnival feeling ship and they also are going to put in the for for you adults out there who just want to get away from any kids and everything that's on board they are putting in the adult only serenity area as well so after the refit if everything goes according to plan the brand new carnival luminosa <laughs> will set sail in australia from brisbane I said it correct, Brisbane, for all the emails when I said Brisbane, but if you look at the way it's spelt, boy, it sure looks like it should be said Brisbane, doesn't it, if you don't know? And I'm not from there, so I didn't know, but it's Brisbane there. I said it correctly. <laughs> okay, but it's supposed to set sail November 6th of this year. Like I said, if all goes according to plan, we all know there's all kinds of supply issues out there for a whole bunch of different things. There's like seven ships waiting engine parts out there to get be able to go back to full speed. So let's see how long it takes for a complete refurbishment of this ship to make it look like a Carnival brand ship. Next, we have a whole pile of upset passengers of the Genting Dream. That's the cruise ship sailing out of Singapore that looks like a... A Norwegian cruise ship. Everyone mistakens it for a Norwegian cruise ship when you see the pictures of it. It's a large ship. I can see why the colors on the hull and everything. But it's a Genting cruise uh, ship. The Genting Dream. And passengers were informed, Oh, you know what we did? You know what we did, everybody? Sorry. Sorry. Somehow, somehow, we mistakenly sold too many cabins. That's right. We overbooked the cruise ship. And no, it's not because of limitations on how many people were allowed on the ship or anything. They just oversold it. Uh, say there's 2,000 cabins, they sold 2,100 cabins. <laughs> Much like airlines do when they oversell tickets for the airlines, uh, which I still don't understand how you're allowed to do. Um, but the passengers found that out. But don't worry, they said, uh, the cruise line said to the passengers, we'll make it up to you. You're going to get your full money back. Well, that's great, unless, of course, you were standing in line waiting to get on your ship when you found out you don't have a ticket anymore and you paid to get all the way to Singapore, etc., etc. But that's beside the point. You're going to get your money back and you're going to get a free cruise. However, there are some stipulations. You have to use it before April 28th of 2023. So eight months down the road, you have to use it within eight months. And of course, it's subject to, subject to cabin availability. Well, how do you know if the cabin's available if you're overbooking the cruise? <laughs> that was the funniest line in the whole statement. Subject to cabin availability. <laughs> All right, why not? Apparently you guys don't care if there's a cabin available or not. You just sold it twice anyway. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, now that's a little bit of a, you know, at least you're getting your money back. You're gonna, some, if you can go, you get a free cruise if you want to go. I don't know. But we do have some really, really crazy, crazy story also coming from New Zealand area. But before I get there, let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you want to keep up to date with all things cruising from the new cruise ships that are coming out to the new expansions that are happening, what ships are restarting, what the protocols are because they're changing every day. They changed on my cruise that I just came off of Alaska. One day you don't have to wear a mask, the next day you're forced to wear. You, it changes all the time. You just want to be kept up to date with all things cruising so you know what's happening for your cruise and maybe even some tips and tricks and how to save some money and just get the best out of your next cruise vacation. Just hit the subscribe button. doesn't cost anything and I really do appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who's about to subscribe and especially to those who already have. Okay, we have a cruise. It is a luxury yacht. Now these cruises are not cheap. They range in the price range of about $30,000 and up. This cruise was called the Island Escape and it's in New Zealand and it even has a helipad on board. It's one of those luxury luxury yachts. Well, people showed up, they flew in, they're getting ready for their dream luxury yacht vacation, and the bus never shows up to pick them up. Because overnight, the cruise line was thrown into receivership and seized by the receiver. So the crew is out of work, <laughs> the receiver it took over control of the ship and has put liens against the cruise company and the cruise ship itself. And passengers were left, there's, there's no cash to help them out. They're stuck in Australia. They have to rearrange all their flights home. They had to pay for last minute accommodations because nobody had accommodations for that night. They're supposed to be on a cruise ship. So all the passengers that were on board Basically, yeah, yeah, they were left in the complete dark. They weren't warned, they weren't told, nothing. The bus never, just never showed up. Here's the real tragic part of all that. Yeah, you pay for a cruise like that. It's supposed to be this dream luxury cruise. And yes, yeah, it's bad enough that it goes under. It, you, you can't go, but the chances of these folks getting their money back is slim to none. Absolutely slim to none. When a cruise ship like this or a cruise line or a, cru a, a, a travel agency or whatever goes into receivership, passengers who paid money and just booked would be put under an unsecured creditor. So everybody else who's a secured creditor goes before you. That includes the government, taxes, fuel, suppliers, crew, etc, etc, etc. They're all secured and then the passengers are basically the last on the totem pole to get any kind of money back. And if there's no money in the pot and there's no money to pay for things and they went into receivership, chances of these folks getting their money back, like I said, is slim to none. So not only were they out, say, the $30,000 that they're probably never going to get back, they're also out the money they had to put for the hotels to change flights, et cetera, et cetera. Some of them probably in the range of fifty to sixty thousand dollars just gone. Now, can you imagine if this was a special anniversary, a once in a lifetime thing? You've saved all your life, and you're gonna do it right, and you will. It's tragic in any situation, but this really is a warning to anybody out there. When you're dealing with very small enterprises, like an individual cruise line that owns one ship, um, anything can happen. And it you, you are left in the lurch and you may not get your money back. So, and, and it's... It's really, really sad that these people had no warning whatsoever. Can you imagine? You're all got your suitcases. You're all set to go on your luxury cruise. You're sitting where? We're, where's the bus? Where's the bus? And the bus never came. And all your hard-earned money is just gone. 
Well, let me know what you guys think down in the comments about the overbooked cruise. Are you excited about the Costa Luminosa coming over to Carnival? Are you going to take a cruise on that? It's supposed to be kind of a hybrid between the two. We'll see what happens. And of course, the tragedy of these folks losing all their money. And I know someone's going to say, well, if they could spend $30,000, they must have $30,000 to spend. No. That's not necessarily the case. Hey, if you go on a $5,000 cruise, does that mean you have $5,000 to lose if you lose your cruise? So don't put it in that perspective. Put it in this perspective of you just lost a big chunk of money that you're never going to get back. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go with that in the comments. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. We'll see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world. Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe, and a great vacation.